Ignition can use, leverage the power of the SQL database to perform the synchronization. Um, and we can have many different PLCs. They can, have, they can be a different uh, brands and protocols of PLCs. And if we need to synchronize a value from one PLC to, another, to a value in another PLC and vice versa, <clears throat> a SQL bridge module is perfect for doing that. Now, if we look at a diagram here and how this really works, so here I've got PLC1 and PLC2. They can be different brands, they can be different parts of the factory, doesn't quite matter. They're not connected whatsoever. But they but Ignition can communicate to them individually. So we have drivers to, to look at those. So if we're communicating to them, we can use a database as a center of our model here. We can have a transaction group, that's what we use in the SQL Bridge module. We can have it looking at both of the PLCs. And if a value changes in PLC1, that then gets synchronized to the database which, the, which the, uh, in the database will see that change happen, which will synchronize it to PLC2. If a value changes in PLC2, we'll synchronize it to the, the database. We see a value change in the database, it'll go down to the value in PLC1. So we, we can effectively use two different transaction groups to synchronize two different PLC values bidirectionally here by putting the, the values in the database, using the database as the middle of the model. And uh, we have many different modes on, on this for who's going to win, if it's if the database is going to win, or PLCs are going to win, if, if we restart the system or if we lose communication. But we've done a lot of work to be able to make this possible where you can easily synchronize the two. And there's a lot, of, a lot of applications out there where you have these islands and they're not connected in the larger control system. And, it's, and it can be costly to maybe put a control objects, you know, to connect all these things together in the middle and then do the programming with that. Where here in Ignition, we can use the SQL bridge module, the transaction groups, to perform these the synchronization or, or move data around at different times. And here we're just doing it when these values change. Another form of the synchronization that a lot of customers will do with these transaction groups is uh, synchronizing the clocks across all the different PLCs. Uh, you know, you know, PLCs don't have um, you know, time, they're not communicating to time servers, and so when you're switching from daylight savings and, and to standard time and other situations like that, we, the, the ignition running on a, on a machine can be communicating to that time server and then can easily synchronize that across all the PLCs that are there, maybe when the, the values get out of sync or just continue on a continual basis keeping those clocks synchronized. Uh, it's another really good use case for the transaction groups. And, and I didn't. I did kind of forget to mention there a moment ago. Transaction groups, uh, we call that, is the way of performing some logic, moving data between the PLC and database. And so we might use one, we might use many of these, but that is the method of, of being able to move the data around. So we would use a transaction group here for each of the PLCs to synchronize the clock. Mapping PLC values to database stored procedures. Now the, the past you know three examples I talked about with the um, the, the, the recipe management um, or the the schedule or the sequence uh, the sequencer any of those we can interface with the stored procedure uh, where we can actually map PLC values as inputs and outputs to a database stored procedure. There are a lot of times that ERP systems or other databases ha already have these procedures defined or that you may want to define a procedure because there could be a lot of logic in that procedure that's on the database side of things. And if we have this procedure, it makes it very easy for us to, to map the, our values into it. So you can imagine when a PLC event happens, a trigger happens, we can run a group that goes and sends values to a store procedure in the database, it executes that procedure, and the results of that procedure are then sent back to the PLC so that we, can, we know what to do uh, whereas you're sort of handshaking the PLC with the database, so we can go back and forth there. This is a a very um, you know it, it's a very commonly done thing for a lot of applications, and it also puts a lot more some of the logic in the database, so it keeps the ignition cleaner. We're not having to put all scripting and things in ignition. In fact, the transaction groups are really eliminating the need to have to do scripting in ignition. 